as I said in the studio, I've got Uva Kwena all the way from Mobile Schools. It's a company that's doing the most here down in South Africa. And we're trying to spread it all the way up through the continent as we do with our music down here. Yep, Trans Africa yep. Radio. Yeah, man. Bakwena, please introduce yourself and what you do to the people so they understand exactly what Mobile Schools is about and what you are about before we get in too deep. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I'd like to thank Trans Africa for the opportunity. My name is Bakwena and I have a project or initiative called Mobile Schools which aims to educate uh, high school students on in South Africa and the rest of the continent uh, maybe later but the main focus is to teach science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and they can, that can be done through their cell phones. So that's what we focus on, basically, to put quality education on cell phones. So you're basically plugging in students from high schools down here in South Africa, plugging them into quality education. Through their making, mobile phones. Yeah, making yeah. it easy for them to access this through their mobile phones, because a lot of them already have mobile phones. Exactly. They're, they're on Facebook. Exactly. They're on WhatsApp. They're on WhatsApp. They're they send Twitter. each other videos, they send each other audio, they send each other text. Why can't that content be educational? So. Yeah. Mobile schools, when did you start this initiative? Uh, the initiative was started three years ago when I realized that there's, there's a lot of students, especially in the townships and rural areas, that do not have access to quality education. And I thought to myself, like, yo, why don't you just put that education on phones? Because everybody was, because if you look at South Africa now, there's a lot of private schools that are popping up and they're very expensive. And my thing was, yo, why don't you just put all that quality education on phones and make sure that kids in the rural areas and townships get quality education so they can go to universities. Look at the fact that mobile schools is for high schools, right? A lot of high school children struggle with maths and science. That's true, that's very true. Which is something that you come up with a solution for, plugging into that information. Yeah. How does this link, how does this affect them? The fact that they don't have the access to maths and science, how does it affect them when they get to varsity level? Now, the first thing you need to understand, and if you're listening and you've been in a township, the first thing you notice about the township is that there's no science labs. Even me, when I was in high school, I didn't have a science lab. When I was being taught science, it was taught on a chalkboard. And they were telling me, like, oh, this is a funnel. This They'll is give you water. A, like, they give you a picture. They will draw it. And not even, like, a good picture. Like, they will just draw like it. a hand-drawn picture. So, so it depends on the ability of the teacher. Exactly. And then the teacher will just say, oh, the water turns blue when you boil it with this chemical. So imagine if you could just watch it on your phone through mobile schools. Yeah, so imagine. You'll have a better understanding than just watching it on a chalkboard. You can easily access a video of, exactly. of it. Unfortunately, we should have labs in all schools. All schools. That's same. a basic necessity. Exactly. How do you do a practical without the actual necessary tools? Without the necessary tools. So that's the worst thing that happens. So you find a lot of students in high school, they're not even choosing maths and science because they just feel like they're difficult, but they're not. So they choose some subjects like biblical studies and geography. Not that there's anything wrong with God. He's the man. But you have to focus on the economy of the country. We I think we have to be very realistic with your needs. Um, I don't know many jobs that have biblical studies as a, know, as a requirement. I know, man. That's a problem because we do produce, we, we do go to school. Yeah, yeah, we do go to school to get educated so yeah. we can get jobs, which yeah, is something true. that also needs to change. It's part of exactly. a, a broader system. And you look at the economy now, like jobs are changing. We're moving away from the economy that the South African economy is based on minerals and we're moving from that. We have to focus on solar energy, we have to focus on future jobs. And it's actually very unfortunate that contribution of minerals to the greater GDP has actually gone down from 6% to 5 now, no, really which sad. shows that 95% of our economy has to depend on something else yes. other than what we yeah. used to depend on yeah. all these years. Um, talking about the fact that there's lack of labs, lack of resources, it's also a strain on the teachers. I think it's one of the problems you've highlighted in your documentation. Yeah. And your presentation, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Because another thing, parents have this weird thing of blaming teachers. They just feel like, yo, if I drop my kid at your school, he or she is your responsibility now. And, and your that's, problem. From and that's, that's not the case. Because the thing is, with the South African uh, education system, we've changed our curriculum like a few times. So that means the teachers still have to learn the curriculum before they teach it. So that's it's not fair. Enough, yeah. It's not fair on them. Because... We moved from Bantu education to three other curriculums and the teachers need to learn them and teach it to the students and then 
So how do you expect the teachers to score the goals if you keep moving the goalposts? Exactly. It's exactly. very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. And it seems like the parents are moving the responsibility of education their children to educators. Because now you look at the resistance to fees must fall. Yeah, yeah. The resistance from fees must fall is coming all the way from the president of the country all the way down to all our elders. Even the parents don't understand why these kids are so frustrated. And it's sad, man. It's sad that we live in a country where students are saying, we want to learn. We don't want free degrees. We don't want a free ride. We just want the opportunity to go to these best universities so we can take our families out of poverty. We have this classism that's going on in society where the rich kids are like, nah, we want to go study. And the poor, who are the majority in these universities, are like, yo, I'm going to be excluded. I have to go back on the streets and hustle. And you're going to complain about crime afterwards so it's really like a clash of ideas in the country yes. the whole fees must fall which is something that I've been touching I'll touch on with my documentary I'm doing a documentary called fees will fall and it's based on that movement of fees and data must fall and they go together having like access to internet is really as important as having access to education like it should be a basic right to have like uh, internet and Wi-Fi and of course the government is trying to do its best they have like free uh, Wi-Fi areas in Pretoria it doesn't work but at least it's there I've stop and still with Ubaquen Manoto all the way from mobile schools and yes we're going to discuss the solution to this right now what is the solution to fees must fall personally for you Ubaquen? Uh personally for me I think what I learned yesterday I attended some uh, Institute of Global Dialogue and they were talking about the issue of fees must fall and they the one thing they mentioned was that we need to start from primary schools. Because we have a situation where we get people who go to tertiary institutions and they can't even speak English properly. They're not equipped. They're not equipped to mentally. Be in and they're not stupid. They're not stupid. It's just that they were not prepared for the work that's demanded in university. Why don't we have universities that specialize in mother tongue language here in, in South Africa? You look at countries like Nigeria. You look at countries like Kenya, mm -hmm. you look at countries like Tanzania, yeah. where even higher education institutions yeah. use English as a medium of uh, instruction, but they also use mother tongue language or the, the, the major majority language spoken in the country. But the majority language spoken in, in South Africa is not really English. No, no, no. Because no. the, okay, the thing is, when it comes to language, the issue becomes uh, which language are we going to choose? Because it becomes that whole divide and conquer, which is what the apartheid system did. So you look at KZN, there's a lot of Zulus. So if it was just Zulus at the university, it really kills us as a country that we don't mix up. So the English part is good, but there should be second language should be the one that's spoken by the majority. Like in the free state, Africans is being taught in the universities, and it's predominantly free an state, African or free Cape state, Town, Cape Town. Stellenbosch. So why can't they, they teach in Tonga in Limpopo? In Limpopo, why can't they teach in, in Debele? In Forte, why can't they yeah. teach in Kosa? Like, it should be on that tip. Because you look And it's easier to understand, because that's the language you've been speaking all your life. So if you're going to come from the township, and you have to compete with people who went to private schools with white people who You're speak really English. Being already you underprivileged. You're also gonna struggle with the content. To start creating Writing our, our own content, history. tell our own stories. Tell us the story about the documentary that you're doing. Uh, I heard you say something about the documentary. Is this gonna be part of mobile schools, uh, or is mobile schools gonna be part of the documentary as a solution to? the skills and problems that you're highlighting in the documentary? Uh, it's a mobile school to, uh, production. So the whole documentary is based on the fact that a lot of people think uh, the kids who are complaining about uh, education should just get over it and go back. But we're trying to come up with solutions. So that's why we went to the IGD yesterday to see if there's professors who have solutions to the problems that we face. So we can take that information back to the people. The education system is a certain way. Yeah. How do we work around it? Or do we need to break it down and package education for the kids to plug into it at an alarming rate, accelerating their own growth, accelerating the country's wealth. Now, the first thing we need to do is, like we said earlier, we need to start from primary school. And the way we package it, we need to understand what kids are passionate about. The problem with our school system is that they'll take somebody who's very artistic, who's very creative, and they put him, compare him with somebody who's good at maths. And they see him as a failure because he doesn't understand maths. And they have to choose like two years before they finish school 
what subjects they want to do. So from scratch, we need to understand what are these kids passionate about. Or you would invest in that. I, I think that's uh, something I also want to take to schools. I think we're going to talk off air about that. But right now, the last three minutes of the interview, man, tell us where can people reach you?